Hello everyone, in this video we will be discussing about the fourth phylum of our discussion that is phylum Platyhelminthes. So this phy fourth phylum, fifth phylum and sixth phylum in a row are all about worms or worm like animals. So here we are discussing Platyhelminthes. So let's come to the point. This word helminths means worms and if we use the word platy, platy means flat. Therefore in this whole discussion we will be discussing about flat worms. So let's start our discussion with our four golden points. The first one, flat worms have organ level of body organization and this is a characteristic point just because only this phylum of our discussion has organ level of body organization. Below this, the second and third phylum that is of Coelentrata and Tenophora had tissue level of body organization and the first phylum had cellular level of body organization that is phylum Porifera. So this is only phylum which is having organ level of body organization and fifth phylum onwards everyone has organ system level of body organization and we already know that fifth, sixth, seventh, the first organ system which developed in phylum Ascalimenthus is digestive system, then circulatory system and then respiratory system that has been a part of our discussion since so long. Now let's come to the second point, whether flat worms have symmetry or not. Yes, flat worms have symmetry and the symmetry here is not radial symmetry, it's bilateral symmetry. That means only a single plane passing through the center could divide the organism into two identical halves. In the first phylum, Porifera, we have no symmetry. Second and third phylum, Coelentrata and Tenophora, we had radial symmetry. Now we have in Platyhelminthus, the fourth phylum, a bilateral symmetry. Coming to the third point, whether the germ layers are two or three in number. So here, or here we have three germ layers and that is again a characteristic point that mesoderm, three germ layer, the outer one is ectoderm, inner one is endoderm and the middle one is mesoderm. So mesoderm first comes in these animals that is flat worms. So flat worms are the first animals in the due course of our evolu evolution to have mesoderm in their development that is the middle layer. Therefore we call them as triploblastic that means three germ layers triplo the word triplo means three blastic means germ layers but here there is no cavity in this mesoderm therefore we still say that these organisms are acylomate i already told you that diploblastic organisms are the first three phylums and the first four phylums are acylomate now coming to the habitat the first second and third phylums of our discussion had aquatic habitat First was first and second was mostly marine and the third phylum that is Tenophora was exclusively marine. But here the fourth phylum that is Platyhelminthus are actually endoparasites. Endo means inside parasite. That means they live as parasite inside the body of their host which include animals and which is also including humans. So these worms, flat worms are actually the worms which we talk about in our intestine. And we take a medicine called as albendazole single tablet which is used for deworming which is distributed in government school setups also just to deworm the intestine of children so this is that worm which we actually kill in that because it is an endoparasite and live inside our intestine now let's talk about their structure they have dorso ventrally flattened body uh, in the in the introduction part of this chapter we already know that dorsal part is the part over which sunlight falls so the ab above part and ventral is the opposite part so that this is dorso ventrally flattened and therefore it forms a flat surface of a worm and therefore called as flat worms now let's talk about the structure of them how do actually they look like so they have hooks and suckers over their body so what is the use of these hooks and suckers? These are present only in parasitic forms which live as a parasite, endoparasite on animals including humans. So they help in absorbing nutrients from the host uh, and some of them can directly absorb the nutrients from their body surface. So hook is actually helping the flat worm to stick to the intestinal wall of any host and sucker helps in you 
helps in taking the nutrition from the host body. So therefore we have hooks and sucker in the parasitic forms of flat worms. Now this is a typical structure of a flat worm showing you hooks, sucker and this part is called as albendo, uh, this part is called as neck and these are called as proglottids but this is not mentioned in NCRT therefore we will not talk them talk about them this is proglottids mature proglottid immature proglottid that is not a part of our discussion right now now let's talk about important cells which are called as flame cells before discussing about flame cells let us discuss about few important cells which we have talked in the previous phylums so phylum porifera had certain characteristic cells which are called as coenocytes or collar cells which had flagella and were lining the spongio seal and therefore causing movement of water in that water canal system in the second phylum phylum coelenterata we had certain cells which had stinging capsule called nematocyst then and those cells were called as nidoblast cells or nidocytes now in third phylum that is phylum tenophora we did not have any special cells but we had a special property of bioluminescence now in the fourth phylum that is phylum platyhelminthes we again have a special cell which is called as flame cell just like the flame of a burning fi fire so these flame cells are specialized cells which help in excretory functions that is osmoregulation and excretion so we can say that they perform the same function which kidneys perform in us in humans therefore kidneys for flatworms is actually flame cells so help they help in osmoregulation that is maintaining osmolarity of the body fluids and in excretion of toxic waste outside the body now let's talk about the young ones box in which we'll be discussing only about three parameters here we are not talking about reproduction that was our second parameter that is not mentioned in ncrt the first parameter whether the sexes are separate or not separate so here sexes are not separate similar to that of tenophora these also have do not have different male and female bodies both the gen, both the sex organs are present on the same animal body therefore no separate sexes and the second thing is what about fertilization and development again using that old mnemonic that for external fertilization we have he abc he stand for hemichordata echinodermata amphibians bony fishes and then tenophora we do not have a name of platyhelminthes in this list so therefore the platyhelminthes will surely have internal fertilization so the fertilization here is internal that means the if we have a flat worm so in that we would one end would be having a male sex organ or say other end would be having a female sex organ so this will send its gamete and that would be fertilizing to the female gamete inside the body of these flat worms therefore the fertilization here is called as internal fertilization now let's talk about the development using our mnemonic of a cube that is fifth sixth and seventh phylums are only having both type of development that is direct some members are having direct development others are having indirect development rest all invertebrates are having indirect development so here we are, we do not have any space for platyhelminthes so therefore platyhelminthes for short would be having indirect development and they are passing through many larval stages and these larval stages is a thing you will have to remember in your second um, second prof subject called as microbiology in that you will have to learn about the cycles which are taught to the many students in coaching centers for UG preparation also but I don't think so they are required for you so just we need to remember that development is indirect and we have many larval stages not a single one so this young ones box is clear I am repeating sexes are not separate fertilization is internal and de development is indirect through many larval stages so this was our mnemonic now let's talk about their regeneration capacity what do you mean by the term regeneration like if we cut our nails they also regenerate so what is the difference between the regeneration shown by flat worms and the regeneration shown by our nails actually what happens if this would have been a flat worm and if i would have trimmed my nails and put it over a table the nail would have given given rise to a complete body of another nail but that does not happen that means it is not a true regeneration 
so what is true regeneration true, re true regeneration means that if we cut a body of an animal then each part would give rise to a complete animal body see if this is the tail portion this is given giving rise to a complete animal body again when it's grows and this is what we call as true regeneration and it is shown by planaria which is a flat worm understood so true regeneration is a characteristic features of flat worms and typically seen in planaria so this is a characteristic feature for this phylum now let's talk about the examples of this phylum so here first we'll be talking about these examples mentioned in ncrt which is including tenia that is tapeworm commonly called as tapeworm and fasciola commonly called as liver flu so diagrams are also mentioned in ncrt you could see that a long it could be in meters the length could be in meters it is that long this is a typical tapeworm which is infecting our intestine and is act as a endoparasite inside humans and then we have liver fluke so we have this also as a endoparasite inside humans and this is the the scientific name is fasciola which is the liver flu so we have two organisms whose name we have to learn under this phylum the first one the first one is tenia or tapeworm the other one is fasciola or the liver flu and one more which we have seen in the regeneration segment that fasciola that planaria is the one which shows true regeneration so these are the three names and for a mnemonic sake i have made this take fashionable plates so from take you could learn tenia which is tapeworm fashionable you can learn fasciola which is liver fluke and plates you could remember that we are talking about planaria and overall all these three examples are part of platyhelminthes that is a fourth phylum of our discussion also called as flatworms thank you for being with me for such long in this video hope you gained some knowledge we have discussed this entire entire phylum as per ncrt and hope you would like to see my other videos also thank you for watching this video